Good evening and welcome to a new edition of To The Point. Without education, there is no development. Whenever we talk about a country like Egypt, a country that is overgoing um, quite uh, a lot of changes at the moment, uh, we are trying to get back on our feet. And a country that has a very, very important resource, which is the human resources. Most of our population is made up of the younger age. Hence, a priority is to shape up education. This evening we'll be delving into how far are we going, what are we aspiring to uh, achieve. With us this evening is uh, Dr. Johansson Naid, who is the head of the National Authority for Quality Assurance and Accreditation of Education. A pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Um, whenever we say the National Authority of Quality Assurance and Education, it's such a, a complex uh, uh, authority or institution. And that brings me to the question, what exactly is this authority doing right now for Egypt? Okay. <coughs> uh, let me just start by saying that you can use the word NACA, which are the acronyms for the National Authority of Quality Assurance and Education. NACA. NACA. Okay. Okay. And I usually like to tell my, um, my friends, um, non-Egyptians, I tell them what NACA in Arabic means purity. And we, we like the name, so okay. you can use NACA. Okay. Um, NACA was established in the year 2006 by the law of 82, and the bylaws were in, um, established in 2007. And we started really working, say, in the 2008. What do we do or why were we established? That's a very important question. Um, mainly, uh, we were established to, um, as a result of the um, um, na national, if you remember, in the year 2000, there was a national um, forum or um, conference for higher education reform, yes, and it, we were. It was part of the uh, <coughs> of the strategic plan. One of the outcomes mm -hmm. was to have an authority for, to make for quality assurance and accreditation of education. Our role is to um, uh, promote and um, raise awareness for the culture of quality. Our role is to help is, um, um, education institutions to prepare their own self-evaluation um, to accredit via visits of these uh, of the institutions and mainly I would say the most important thing is to raise the, qual the level of trust, um, trust um, of faith, of uh, recognition of the outcomes of this education system which is the graduate, be it the um, uh, university graduate or the school, um, you know, the high school. So graduates. you work with schools and universities, exactly. not just uh, yes, exactly. uh, universities. Yes. Um, can I just know that within the past couple of years, what has been the strategy? Because even though you were established or you became active in 2008, uh, really only in the past couple of years have we realized that we really need a complete overhaul. Mm, yeah, exactly. Or <coughs> we're working, let's mm. put it that way, mm -hmm. towards a complete overhaul. We, 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 we are aspiring to achieve a lot and mm -hmm. without a qualified human resource, you really cannot uh, get anywhere. What, what has been done in the past couple of years? Uh, because when you say accreditation, the first thing that came to my mind was the ranking of universities, for mm. example. Mm. So mm. Uh, for you to be accredited, because this is how we search for universities. Mm. How does it rank globally, if it's accredited or not? And it can be not just the whole university, but even a faculty in that university. Okay. So what has been done in the past couple of years? So okay, to speak? Let, me, um, let me say uh, that our <coughs> name is uh, Quality Assurance mm. and Accreditation. Yes. So I always say quality is the most important uh, yes. aspect of our work. Um, uh, the, in the last couple of years, like you said, um, very, let's not say in the last couple of years, but in the last 10 years, a very important thing happened, which was globalization. Mm -hmm. Globalization is an issue that has changed the face of the world and has changed as a result, of course, competitiveness, education, graduates, the need for graduates, the labor market itself, and, and so on and so forth. Um, at the same time, we're going through um, in the Industry 4.0, so we're going through ma massive, if we'd like to say, change um, in uh, technology, in, uh, in needs and skills, and, and, and even the face of the world is going to change within the next few years. Mm. Um, all this has um, resulted in different forms of education, international forms of education, like international schools, international universities, branch campuses, um, 
and whatnot. And this is not only on the level of uh, Egypt, but worldwide. And so basically, um, people have started uh, to question, uh, or not to question, to how are we going to make sure that the graduate of this institute or institution is a good graduate that we can trust what they have learned. Two, came, two things came. Now, quality assurance and accreditation <coughs> is older than uh, ranking. Mm -hmm. So quality assurance is, um, is the more the, the view of an institution in, 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 its in, a, in the long run. And it basically looks at the graduate, it looks at education, it looks at faculty members, research, and uh, community service in the education. Ranking looks at a kind of a different perspective. Yes. Ranking is a snapshot for one year. That's why you find ranking, a university will rank um, a level a particular year, next year someone else gets, and so on and so on. It changes, but a quality assurance does not because quality assurance is um, building trust in the graduate, telling people that this is an institution, that um, the processes the um, um, inputs and the outputs and the outcome and the graduate itself is a good institution. It could be ranked um, very highly, cannot be ranked very, you know, but still I do not say that r ranking and accreditation are kind of um, two, two, you can say it's two, two uh, faces of the same coin mm. or of a different coin for that matter, yeah. but I mean, it, it's, they, go, they not go in hand in hand. One is not a prerequisite for the other, but if you have and you're accredited, you're probably <coughs> highly ranked. Mm. If you're highly ranked, you're not necessarily, you, 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 you know, you are definitely accredited. And mm. the, the, you know, and the opposite is not true. Mm. So advancing education is quite costly. Yes. Is there anything in the pipeline to reduce the burden on the government? In other words, whenever we said, when the issue came up of um, free education, uh, or subsidized education, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. to speak, in universities. Mm -hmm. uh, Egypt was not in the 100 million mm -hmm. rank, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, how are we going to advance and develop education, which is quite expensive, okay. and yet make it very cheap for those seeking it? Okay, um, let me just take the word that you said, which is really right. It's not free education. It's subsidized education. Yes. And unfortunately, we used to say, the word free. And so what is free? Easy come, easy go. What's free is probably does not have, or does not have a cost, does not have a value. So unfortunately, we as a population did not really um, cherish what the cost uh, that is put in education, what the government pays for education. And maybe years ago when somebody told me it's free. In, 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 because in, they're not calculating exact, that it is, you're it is receiving it exactly, at a lower, at a lower price, price or but no it costs price. a lot. It costs a lot. So yes. basically, I would love for us to start using the word, the word of subsidized mm. or whatever word we would like to say, but not free. Mm. Because free... It is subsidized. It's exactly. The government pays government the higher bill. Somebody pays the, Somebody has to pay the, uh, has to pay the bill. Um, there is no. Um, there are ways, of course, to do things less expensive uh, by uh, by investing in technology, particularly, and that is like through remote remote, um, you know, ODL or open and distance learning and, and things like that. There is in part in, in the countries that have advanced and uh, that have systems that very well advanced, like in Finland, for example. Mm -hmm. When you look at the schools, they're very they're very simple. Uh, when you look at the curriculum, it's it's simple. People are you know, they're encouraged to do things that are not necessarily in, in class or in the school, and that is uh, um, and that cost has a burden. Um, there is no homework. There is no too much studying, and so on. And basically, these are things that probably will help reduce the cost of education because it, it, you do not have to depend on um, private tutoring and whatnot. You do not have to. You will not have all these issues if you just change the system of. Um, examination mm -hmm. of, of assessment. Mm -hmm. That's one of the parts that can reduce costs mm -hmm. for education. Uh, right now we are um, on the verge of um, um, doing a lot of uh, joint protocols, cooperation agreements with reputable universities mm -hmm. abroad. How, how do you feel this will um, advance and assure a higher quality of education, especially at the graduate level, which is right before you hit the market? Okay, um, I think this is uh, one of the very uh, um, um, new ideas that has been developed and have been applied in, in several parts of the world, um, in um, the Emirates, in China, in Singapore, in India, and even in Bahrain. And so so they ha when you have the branch campuses, 
uh, these uh, campuses are have a very high quality of um, education offered and of the programs and uh, and they um, this will help uh, in several ways in the first thing if people who would who would like the kids to have the children to have a better education and sending them abroad they will have this opportunity to have it yeah. in the country uh, on the other hand you will also be uh, targeting um, um, people from Africa and the Arab world and so on so basically you will help in promoting and in, in, in the betterment of the education system in Egypt and of course it will help the competitiveness because yeah. say for example private universities or public universities and most of the of the um, 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 uh, cooperation uh, is between private and public or, um, uh, um, uh, or pu private and um, and let me put differently, public schools and or the government universities and uh, um, uh, the branch campus or private schools in the branch campus. So it will help even the mo our in own institutions because yeah. you will uh, you will be um, um, you, you will have a view of what a better a different way of people do things. I don't want to say better or worse because we we have our challenges and we have good universities and we have reputable schools and reputable programs, but it's just a different way of doing things that might benefit us mm -hmm. in, in Egypt. Um, the, when we talk about quality assurance, is this only applicable to the public universities or the public schools, or uh, does this also take into account the private? Oh, it takes into account everything. Mm -hmm. Like um, um, what, what what we do or what we are responsible for uh, quality assurance and accreditation of all types of schools and universities pre-university higher education postgraduate and whatnot and we are also um, responsible for all types that is to say public private azhar and um, um, technical education and so so basically um, it's it's all it's the whole bunch and it's the same uh, standards for all because yeah. quality and accreditation is just the same thing it's not because you're a private or a public school that we will change um, our um, standards because our standards are um, uh, aligned with international standards and we have been um, recognized by several international agencies and so we do not change our standards because it's a private or a public or whatever mm -hmm. so it is applies to everybody the same standards of course it differs from the, the, the university uh, or from the level of university or the school or the program to the level of if it's high school or middle school or um, uh, primary schools. Mm -hmm. So it differs from that. Sense. When you say recognized, does that mean that uh, the national authority is recognized at an international level? Yes, it is. We have been recognized this year uh, mm -hmm. by the World Federation for Medical Education um, uh, as um, uh, the as an authority that that accredits. Um, 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 school, um, schools, medical, medical school. schools, yes, uh, and um, uh, and this means that our graduates will be uh, our, the graduates from schools that we accredit will be recognized in the United States and different parts of the world when they apply, mm -hmm. uh, and they will. This is also helped in the mobility of these graduates in different parts of the world because once they understand or they know that we are recognized and so our stamp is valid is, is mm -hmm. recognized by such an, uh, a reputable international institution this helps them very well uh, we are also recognized um, in, 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 um, on, in the level of the Arab world uh, and we are recognized on the level of Africa and we're seeking even more recognition uh, on the level of recognition and um, um, leadership in the African in, in, in the quality assurance in the African area mm -hmm. the curriculum what role do you play vis-a-vis -vis the curriculum? Because whenever we talk about quality, the quality is really not just in the facilities, but to start off with the curriculum, that it has to be advanced, meeting international standards. Exactly. Um, we have shifted for the last, in the last couple of years, and maybe this is one of the things that we've done in the last couple of years, we've shifted from standard-based education or the uh, teacher-based education to uh, competency-based education. And, and by this we mean that it's students are not uh, assessed for what they learn or what they know. They're assessed for what they can do and what they can apply. 
And okay. this has helped us. This has also is aligned with the, with the movement that is happening in the level of uh, the Ministry of uh, Education and of higher education, which is they also are shifting towards um, competency-based education. With competency-based, we look at the different things. We look at how the curriculum is, uh, is designed, how it is, and this is, we do not get involved particularly in what a teacher says or what the ministry, um, but we get involved with how it is applied, uh, right. how, is, um, how do they assess it, how are students uh, accepting uh, or, or, um, what, they, what, they, what they learn, and, um, and um, we look at the, um, also we have our own standards, which we call the National Academic Reference Standards, but this is for the level of the uh, high, the, you know, uh, What the about the, the, what the market needs? Oh, this is very important. Because uh, the, the, the methodology even of education changed. Uh, my generation is different from my kids, from my parents. I mean, the, the, the needs, <coughs> the quality of the graduate is changing as mm -hmm. we advance. Mm -hmm. Is this taken into account? Because yes. Uh, our curriculums have really suffered the lack of change for a long time. Mm -hmm. Is this mm -hmm. being applied now that the curriculums are outdated? The teaching methodology even is outdated. Exactly. That's, that's why um, um, that's true in what you say in several areas, be it higher education or pre-university education, but this is being tackled now. Uh, the reason it has not changed because we depend on knowledge-based education. And so basically knowledge Mm. It does not change. So you're teaching people history, you're teaching them information, you know, information based, and that's it. Mm. And what we say is that knowledge is no longer the, the, the crux of what people should know, because knowledge is at the tip of our fingertips, your mobile, your smartphones, your iPads. You don't need to memorize information exactly. anymore. Yeah, exactly. You don't need that. <laughs> you need to apply information. You need to, to see or look at how you can use this information, this knowledge, and the skills that you, that you learn or you develop and how to do something out of that. And so that's, that's basically what we call competency. That this changes the whole idea of te teaching methodology because you no longer are a teacher who preaches or who teaches in class. No, you become a facilitator. Mm. You become part of a, a group that is uh, competency-based education depends on um, 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 teamwork how students work together. And even some students, um, some learners, will advance bef more than others. Mm. And they can finish a particular task and move to a different task. Mm. And this is applied everywhere, and we're trying to apply this in, in Egypt. Yeah. So, we are, we, so we have changed our standards to competency-based standards. We have changed the way we look at or assess, um, evaluate uh, teaching and learning in schools, pre-university and higher education, based on that. And so yes, it, all this has changed. And if you raise the level of the standards, education definitely will develop with that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, negative factors in advancing education or even catering to the market is some cultural norms. Um, if you get a certain, falling within a certain percentile, people want you to enter engineering or medicine or what have you. Mm -hmm. We're not really thinking about what um, the market needs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know this, this has nothing to do directly with uh, mm -hmm. the quality assurance and accreditation, but um, definitely you're all working within under one umbrella or exactly. uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's one, um, because when we say that we, Egypt has um, a strategic vision for education in 2030 mm -hmm. and all this will pour into that vision. Mm -hmm. How are we changing the cultural norms or addressing the norms even that education is of importance to the females as much as the males, um, uh, vocational mm -hmm. training is mm -hmm. important, not just university, the market may be mm -hmm. even saturated with university. How is all this being played to the public, worked on uh, in the public? Oh, of course, you, you, it does not, definitely does not play in our field. Our, it's not Direct, directly scope related, of work. it's not scope of work, but like I always say, it is, we, we, we develop, um, we, ref, reform, we develop the notion of standard-based reform. So it's by the standards that we apply is that we believe that reform can be done. Mm. Uh, so so um, definitely, we, part of the accred accred accreditation is that we look at the graduates of the school. So say we're going to the um, pre-university or even let's, well, let's take the example of the higher education or the vocational education as you said. Uh, we look at the graduates. Have they been employed? This is one, the employment rates, that's part of what we do. We, we have meetings with alumni from the particular uh, university and we see whether they have 
being in good positions or not, or have they worked with a with a degree, yeah. or a de so that this is part of what we do. Another thing that another in, um, um, issue that we do is that we look at how the curriculum, how the programs have been developed in relation with the market. So. Yeah. Say, for example, if you're a vocational and you're teaching people, for example, um, uh, how to build um, a wall using brick and mortar, mm. is that what the field needs now? Mm. So if that's not it, if people are using different ways to, to teach uh, or to, to apply. So we see whether or not you've had stakeholders involved, uh, whether you've surveyed the market, whether you have uh, looked at the development and advancements worldwide. This all falls within our scope of work. Yes, we do not. So it's indirectly. When we look at all that, we, you might not accredit a program that is mm. not needed. Mm. So we always say it is fit of purpose and fit for purpose. Mm. So whether, I mean, you, you cannot teach people or try to create a position in or a, or a, um, a work that does not exist right now. Mm. Um, a position or um, 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 an occupation that the, word, the market does not need. So we try to do that and we try to work on that, even projecting for the future. Mm. We, uh, and we do this, uh, uh, one of our, our, conferences, our conferences was called um, Education for Today and Tomorrow. This is your last conference? No, that was one of our very early ones. Mm -hmm. Our last conference was about the African, it was uh, yes. continental. So and, and what we said basically in that conference is that um, what you teach people now, if you're teaching them for today, when they graduate, we will have yesterday's knowledge and yesterday's skills. Exactly. So what you want to do is you're teaching them for tomorrow, not for, for yesterday. Is this being taught to the kids themselves, to the students themselves? Because whenever we talk to our kids about um, which universities to enter, which disciplines to, to, to think about, you always advise them, don't look today, imagine Exactly. Egypt 15, 20 years from exactly. now. Make sure you have a degree or you're studying a discipline that will be needed. Unfortunately, this needs a certain level of intellect to address your kids exactly. that way. And exactly. How are we helping are we, we, kids in schools to, to, to see things that way? Okay, it's um, in a way, um, one of the statistics statistics that was in the states recently is that that 60 percent of our kids in in primary schools will be working a job that has not yet been in, created so we don't even know where we will where be. we will be yes um, um there there are many um, um uh, there has been work done with the ministry of higher education in projecting what are the needs going to be for the next and in uh, in the for the next say decades or so because basically Africa, North Africa, particularly Egypt, like you said in the beginning when we started, you said that our best asset was our human yeah. resources. Exactly. And so we will be able to um, um, import our, our kids, our, our graduates, mm -hmm. to work in Europe and in different parts of the world unless they, if they don't have the skills, if they don't, if they don't fit the market, mm -hmm. then neither they will not be able to work in Egypt nor we'll work elsewhere. Abroad. Um, it is tough because, like you said, um, we have lived in a very, for a very long time talking about um, colleges of um, the high ranked colleges and the low. There's no such a thing. So we thought that studying, becoming a physician and becoming uh, an engineer, mm. and that's the best thing. And if you don't get grades, so, uh, then mm. you go to, you know, it's not, this is not the fact. Mm. Teachers are as important as doctors and, 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 and engineers and architects and, and they're as important. Every, every position, every occupation is important. Mm. Uh, parents need to know that. Uh, it's not, um, it's tough, but it needs a culture change. And this is one of the worst parts, is to convince the, the, the parents, to convince the public that they are part of the education system. Mm. So it's, uh, if we say that we, are, we, together with the Ministry of Higher Education, the Ministry of, um, of, um, of, uh, of Education, Technical Education, if we are um, a triangle, then the, the community, the parents mm. are in, they are the part in the middle of that, of that triangle. Mm. So we communicate with, with, with the ministries, but we all have to work on the public mm. because we have to change the perception. And unless we do that, and I think part of that has mm. got to be do with the media. Yeah. change the perception of how we look at um, yeah. um, uh, doctors and physicians and, and, um, and um, engineers and uh, 
um, you know, um, change this whole language um, that, that, that we use. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but it's important and we all should believe that it's, it's part of our jobs, all of us. Um, whenever we talk about quality assurance, we cannot ignore those that are embarking on the job or are entrusted with this job, and that is the teachers. Mm -hmm. The quality of the teachers. <laughs> if you want to advance education, yes. Um, because, for example, um, one of the things we heard that when they um, said we're going to have those tablets in schools, well, tablets are good. The young kids, yeah. they are very, very smart, uh, uh, smart yes. when it comes to this technology. Yes. Uh, yet, in some instances, the problem was that the kids could operate those tablets, but the teacher were not as Yes. Comfortable, to put it diplomatically. What are we going to do about the quality of the teacher that is really contributing to that system? Okay, two important issues. First, you have the teachers that are already in the system. Mm. These teachers have to be uh, trained mm. and there has to be professional development for them. Now, your system is, not, is going to be as good as your weakest um, as your weakest teacher, hmm. you know, if the teachers are not, this is the, this is the quality of the system, yes. it's the teacher itself. Hmm. So unless the teacher, and of course leadership and, and, and the rest of, but unless the teachers are trained to be up to the standards of what, uh, of what the system, of what the new system is, unless they have some buy-ins, I mean, you have to give them, let them understand that this is not only for the benefit hmm. of, the, of the learners, it's for them as well. Yeah. And this is part. This, this is a whole um, um, mm. issue that has to be tackled. And then there are the, the teachers to be, and those who are studying in the faculties of uh, education. Mm. And this whole system, it has to start by there because this is your input. This is your, your, the, you know, the people who are going to feed the system later on. Mm. So these, you train the people who are in the system right now. And you start by changing the faculties of education. Many faculties of education are changing their curriculum. Many faculties of education are starting to, to develop the, the, the quality of the, of the teachers to be, yes. so, as to, so to say. But unless you, you tackle these two issues, we will not really have yes. an impact on changing, or at least it will going to, it's going to be very slow by the time all the teacher, teachers are there. But like you said, our kids are smarter than us. Uh, in, in, in using uh, the technology. Mm -hmm. So we have to train it to be up to date with, uh, in that. Um, one of the things that uh, President Sisi mentioned in the last World uh, Youth Forum was Egypt's contribution uh, to uh, in the reforming of education in the African continent. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, you just mentioned that the last conference was pertaining to Africa, and uh, I believe this is the sixth conference uh, yes. that you held. Six, six, um, how are we uh, working on that? We have quite a major role. We're heading the African Union, and we have quite a major role to play in the continent. Mm -hmm. Uh, worth noting, uh, as is the case in Egypt, Africa is very rich with the young population. Mm -hmm. But it's like um, um, an asset that can either work positively or really cause a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. um, how are we working to develop youth in the continent, so to speak? How is Egypt? How what is the Egyptian role in that? Uh, well, um, uh, um, there is. Um um, our institution, our authority, we have been part of several African initiatives in the last uh, two or three years. Um, one of them is called the Harmonization uh, HACWA, it's the Harmonization of, uh, an uh, of Quality Assurance and Accreditation of Higher Education in, uh, in the continent. Mm. And, um, and we were part, we were part, we have developed in that, in, that, in this regard, uh, um, African standards and guidelines. And these African standards and guidelines pertain to higher, educa higher um, education, quality assurance in higher education, universities and programs, and uh, um, to, for quality assurance agencies like, like ourselves. And this project has been very, very successful. It ended like a, about a year ago, and, we, and we have, we're trying to disseminate, and we have participated in um, one of the visits from the HACWA initiative. And when they saw our work as, a, as an institution, um, uh, we, yeah, um, 
they recommend, we were acknowledged and recognized as one of the important uh, assets uh, in Africa uh, to help in the establishment of other um, uh, other quality assurance agencies. Yeah. Uh, another um, initiative we're in is a, um, 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 uh, um, a project with UNESCO uh, in uh, different uh, African countries where we are supposed to help with uh, helping uh, the, um, the African um, countries that do not have uh, quality assurance agencies mm -hmm. to, to establish their quality assurance agencies. Uh, we are also working uh, with the African Union and the, the education sector to develop um, um, a qualifications framework for Africa and to develop a pan-African uh, um, quality assurance. Uh, so we are trying to raise um, help by raising um, uh, the quality assurance in the institution in, in, Afri in the African institutions, and they're very, very good examples, and they are wonderful. Um, you know, we we have always been looking north. It's about time we started looking south because yes. they're very wonderful experiences, wonderful people, of great friends to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. and um, we can all work and learn from one another. Um, and um, uh, what we also uh, maybe need to. Um, um, work on is um, establishing these, the links between us and promoting the um, mobility of students and of faculty members to and from uh, um, um, in, you know, um, each exchange. Uh, exchange throughout the, the continent. Mm. So these are the initiatives we're working on and we're looking forward for the next, uh, like our strategy for the next couple of years is to become a leader, is the leadership in the quality assurance and to regain that to re exactly because I, as you were saying when you talk about exchange the first thing that came to my mind was we used to be the training exactly place i mean cairo yes. university yes. was and al azhar and stuff were, were the training places where people would come and get their education here and contribute to the development of well we have to also al azhar is playing a great role as well in the African uh, um, continent, and we do have uh, Egypt is home right now for the uh, um, AU, which is the Afri the, um, the uh, AAU, which is the Association for African Universities, and it's in, in, in this look it's it's, has been established a few months ago, and it is it, it is at Al Azhar University, mm -hmm. and this is one of the things that we in, as Egypt we are very proud of. Mm -hmm. Yes, we would like to regain the leadership, and we as an institution, as an authority, we would like also to play a very important role in the quality assurance of the continent in the next few years, mm -hmm. hopefully. Does the authority work on changing the mindset of that it's not important to get a um, 99% um, degree uh, grade in your high school certificate, but rather what are the skills? For example, in most of the advanced universities worldwide, it's not just about, about the grading. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also about um, 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 certain um, essays you present mm -hmm, the university mm -hmm. with uh, uh, some um, scientific institutions even do like a, a test like yes. a, um, an online test even mm -hmm. if you're uh, from abroad are we going to start using those methodologies to make sure that those who enter the university really are not just um, good people at learning and yeah. writing but yeah. really have the skills mm -hmm. to contribute to that faculty um, what we are, what we are trying to um, work with right now, or, uh, with both uh, both ministries, is that uh, we're trying to establish the fact that a high school diploma, a high school degree, is an end of um, it's an end of a phase. Mm -hmm. So you've got, and this we do that by what we call the um, 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 a national qualifications framework. Our national qualifications framework is a frame, framework that discusses what are the competencies, what are the skills, what is the knowledge that every graduate of a particular level should be able to know, mm. uh, should know and be able to do. So we, what we say is that you don't, it's not necessarily that you have finished, if you've got your high school diploma, that you can automatically enter the uh, Whichever university. faculty you want. Depending on your, on your um, um, grades. No, it's, uh, 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 you have finished that. Now, with the, you know, to enter in, in another phase, this other s institution has to have its own regulations and rules. And this is maybe what the ministry is trying to do, the Ministry of, uh, mm -hmm. edu uh, of Higher Education, with the, um, what they call the ad admission, admission tests. Yes. I know it's going to be very tough. 
I know people will, will, will struggle with that a lot because um, um, some people think it's not fair. We studied all those years. We've got our high school diploma. Why shouldn't I just automatically go to um, faculty of medicine now that I have 99.5 percent? But there are certain, uh, even you, ab abroad, you you do certain um, admission skill tests. Skill, exactly. If you don't have those you're skills, right you're not qualified. I mean, people I know, I know in the, when I was studying in the states, people I knew there, when they were in, the, you know the. Um, um, the second year, the second year of the, not the not in grade eleven, which is one year before the final. The final. They were they were um, um, uh, writing to universities and asking them what are the requirements, and yes. it was it was just and they had to write an essay. They had I even wrote some recommendation letters for some of the the. Now the it's even now. tougher. The yes. cri admission criteria exactly. is it's even a, tougher. And, um, so it's not only a grade; it's who you are, mm -hmm. whether you believe or not. You, 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 they, they have to trust that. You as a graduate, as a learner, once you enter the institution and graduate, you will be able to um, um, represent them well, and you, will be, and you are able, you are tough enough and good enough yeah. to add and to contribute to the, um, um, you know, to, to the college environment. Not only that you are a very good student with numbers or with grades or whatnot, and you just got a very, but you're not social. You do not, you don't have extracurricular activity and so on. So no, it's a different. You, you look at, at the the person mm. and the, the student. Are we also the going to apply this so that uh, even certain um, uh, faculties um, we're not giving them their uh, worth so to speak? Uh, certain faculties if you didn't have high grades well the mm. admissions you, you apply mm. and there is no place for you in yeah. the popular faculty so mm. to speak so you end up going to another faculty because well this is, this is what you grade what you grade even though maybe some of those faculties are quite pivotal mm -hmm. faculties are we going to work on changing that as well it's yes. not be because you got 60 percent it doesn't qualify you to enter this faculty because it's not popular exactly uh, we're going to work it's not a matter i mean grades are important if we um um for particular reasons too so people can, you know, um, but it's not, it's great if they only reflect your knowledge and what you have learned uh, and what you have been able to, uh, you know, to really... Um, Isn't that the criteria now? It's knowledge. No, it's unfortunately... It's, it's not skills right now. It's not right skills now. anymore. No, it's not skills, skills yet. yet. Let's yet. With it. It's not skills yet. So if you're not, and that's what we say when I talk about competencies, competencies are not only skills. Competencies are knowledge and skills combined. Mm. So if you're competent in something, it means that you can do it if you're very competent or mm, whatever, in the excellent competency, if that's the, if, if that's such a thing. So it means that you can do this better than the next person, even though they can still do it. But if you can do it in five minutes and it takes them 10 hours to do the same job, so of course you're more competent. So you might be eligible to be to do something other than the, the next person. Um, so if, if you, if we go this way. Grades will be important in, say, for a particular part. That is to say, the knowledge part. It, it's, it's part it, of the criteria, of but, the not, the, but right, not, the, not the main criteria. And, and not the, yes, exactly. Yeah. And not the only criteria for that matter, because right now it is the only criteria. Yeah. You, you, I mean, people will enter, for example, uh, um, uh, I remember at certain one time, and somebody wrote a few years back, they said that the daughter got whatever grades, 88% uh, or whatever, something like that. And she did not do well in Arabic and literature and English and what. And the only school she's going to is um, a faculty of, um, um, of, 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 of literature, something like that. And they say she got the, great, the best grades in uh, full marks in, in math and science. And she has a more of a scientific, scientific mind. But, and, and because of the other subjects, her grades were lower and she was not able. Mm. In some of the universities, even here in, in Egypt, some of the, of the private universities would look at your particular grades. They would screen. They would screen. And particularly like if you have one of those um, international um, diplomas, they will look at your grades in the different. And, and there is criteria, and in Egypt we do that, even with um, the Maktab at Tansi, they do the same thing. Mm. They look at your grades in, in particular subjects. Mm. If you do not qualify, so you do not, if you get less than a C in a particular subject, you, you're not qualified to go to faculty of, for example, of engineering and so on. So why don't we do it? On, I think it is doable, but it will take, it is part of the cultural change that you were yeah. talking about. Uh, we have a couple of minutes before we la uh, wrap up, and um, I'd like to ask you, where does, uh, where do you see 
Egypt five years from now when it comes to education? Mm. Where do I see Egypt five years from now when yes. it comes to education? I believe that um, the, the administration, um, President Sisi, uh, has a dream for Egypt. And this dream, he dreamed um, that Egypt would be, or his dream, the word that I quote is most I won't try, try to translate it right now, but uh, so basically that Egypt will, it's not only the mother of the world, the mother of civilization, it's going to be as big as the world. Mm. And when I see what our education in Egypt, uh, I see um, schools uh, with less, less students, less learners in classes. I see us using the word learners and not students. I see us using the words of uh, facilitators and not teachers. I see us applying, that's in the, I see uh, graduates who are able um, to, to select or the right place they want to go to, not because they, they uh, got the best grades, but because they know this is the place they're going to excel. I see Egypt leading the world, not the world, leading uh, Egypt, leading Africa, leading the, the year. Why not the world? Our ancestors pioneered in different disciplines. You said five years. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, if, you t uh, if you ask for 10 years, uh, I'll tell okay. you the world. Okay. Okay? And I see us, uh, if we work with what the, the, the president has, the, the vision and the, um, you know, the, 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 the passion, yeah. he, he, he believes in, in Egyptians and in our people. Uh, if we work with our vision 2030 to, up, to, to, to really work through that, particularly in education, and yes. we've got, I mean, it's one of the best uh, stretch that was um, designed and applied in Egypt, and it has really measurable goals, and we can apply that. We're a little bit far in education right now. Yeah. Um, particularly well, we neglected developing it for quite some time. It is true, this is true. But we have, now we have all of us just put hands in hands yeah. and work on that. Uh, I believe we can do it in five years, lead yeah. the continent and the area, mm -hmm. and in 10 years, yes, lead the world. Go back to leading the world again. Go back to it. Exactly. <laughs> we, we need to go back to what we were doing, yes. not live on our uh, on reminiscing on our old, uh, we used to be. No, mm -hmm. we want to be. Mm -hmm. We were, and we are going to be again. Mm -hmm. Well, on that positive note, I'll uh, wrap up our show this evening. Thank you very much for your uh, contribution and positive outlook. And indeed, uh, we were, and since we were, we can be again. Yes. And we have a very, very big asset. Our youth really is quite a big asset, uh, not just in Egypt, but in uh, the African continent. And we can lead uh, its reformation. Again, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank to you the point, wish you the very best of luck in future endeavors. I'd like to thank you, the viewers, wish you a very pleasant evening, and we'll see you same time next week. Until then, good night. <laughs>